What's up guys and welcome back to Software Nando Solutions and today we're talking about Call of Duty Warzone Season 4. Now today I'm going to make this video short, sweet and simple just for the people out there that really needs to fix for Call of Duty Warzone Season 4. Now it's being played right now and a lot of people are having problems because every time Call of Duty Warzone brings out a new season or basically brings out, you know, every time a new update or whatever the case might be, the game's more broken than what it's ever been before. So let's jump straight into it. Just follow my guidelines and you should be good to go. Alright, so the first thing you're going to need to do is open up a Battle.net like this and then go to Battle.net's logo over here and go to Settings. Put this on Exit Battle.net completely on Game Launch. So what it does is it won't run Battle.net in the background and use resources like your RAM, CPU, SSD, hard drive, whatever the case might be. Scroll all the way down and make sure that this is unticked. If it's ticked like this, go ahead and tick it and say Restart Now. Then what it's going to do is it's going to untick it for you and this is the best to take this off. Trust me, take it off, you do not need it. Say done, then you're going to go to this little gear icon over here, go to options, and go to show an explorer like this, and go to Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Scroll all the way down, go to modernwarfare.exe, right click on it, say properties, and go to compatibility mode. Now for a lot of people out there, they might be using this right now, where it says disable full screen optimization, or run this program and its administrator. Now for a lot of people, this helps, and for a lot of people, it doesn't, okay? Now I just want to explain something to you guys, so you can understand this the reason why it helps for some people and why it doesn't help for some people is because a lot of people don't run the exact same computers most cases <laughs> no one runs the exact same computer so i highly recommend playing around with this either you can enable these two things or disable these two things right for a lot of people actually by enabling it like this and say apply going into the game right launch it then exit their game then come back here and disable these two things and apply it and go okay and close out of this makes the game not crash or makes the game run a little bit better all right so next thing we're going to need to do is actually jump into call of duty warzone itself and i'm going to show you the settings that you're going to be using for call of duty warzone season 4 for the best fps and for the best you know possible gameplay experience for you guys out there who Ever's watching this video, you should be good to go. All right, let's jump straight into Call of Duty Warzone. Let me show you what you're going to need to do. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, I'm in Call of Duty Warzone right now at this very moment. And as you can see, I'm doing about 120, 150, 160 FPS with my specific setup that I'm running. It's a 9700K water cooled with 16 gigs of RAM and RTX 2060 OC overclocked. My RAM's overclocked, my CPU's overclocked. Every single thing on my machine is overclocked. Now, ladies and gentlemen, all you need to do is go to options over here and I'm gonna show you the best settings that you can be using for Call of Duty right now at this very moment. All right, so the first thing you're going to need to do is display mode. I highly recommend playing this in full screen mode for the best, for the best possible Gameplay experience. Keep this at full screen mode. Now, I know a lot of people out there are running low end gaming PCs, you know, budget gaming PCs, whatever the case might be, or a laptop, whatever the case might be. A lot of people play this in full screen borderless or full screen extended window. I do not recommend it, but if you do get more FPS by doing so, go ahead and do so. But I highly recommend keeping it at full screen. Obviously, this is your main display that you're playing your game on, and then obviously this is your graphics card, so you're going to select it. This is the refresh rate of your monitor, so if you have a monitor, like a gaming monitor, with 240 hertz, 144, whatever the case might be, go ahead and select the highest refresh rate that it can select in this option. This one over here, you're going to put on 100%. A lot of people actually change this a little bit down. I do not recommend changing it very far down. Just change it to about 95. The lowest you should be going is the 90 and then just press enter like this don't worry your game's not going to look like this it will still look absolutely beautiful like that on 90 just don't bring it any more down i'm going to keep mine at 100 and i do recommend that you keep on yours 100 unless you are losing fps inside this game dynamic resolution disable this this you're just not going to touch just leave it at 10 this you're going to put on automatic depending on the monitor that you're currently running a lot of people have ultra wide gaming monitors and whatever the case might be then you can go ahead and find your personal settings but i highly recommend just choosing automatic it will automatically pick up what monitor you're running or what display you are running v-sync every frame or i'll sync every frame which is v-sync this is basically just screen tearing literally it shows you what it does this is screen tearing this is all this application is for or it's for you to cap your fps to the refresh rate of your monitor so if you enable this and you apply these settings it's going to cap your fps to the refresh rate of your monitor so let's say it's 
you do 60, you're going to do 60 FPS. Let's say you, you have 120 hertz, you're going to do 120 as max. Let's say you have a 240 hertz monitor, the max that it will be hitting or will get to, if it can, it will do 240 FPS. All right. So I keep mine disabled because I do not get screen tearing and I don't cap my FPS. This one over here, custom frame rate limit, you're going to keep on unlimited. And then this one over here, I highly recommend changing this from its default settings to a little bit higher to like 60 or 65. So you can actually see the modern warfare symbol over here in the middle. So you can actually see people in little dark corners. Display gamma 2.2, this one disable and this one disable. And you're going to apply these settings just like this. You're going to go to quality over here and you're going to change this for your own personal experience and your own personal way of playing this game. I keep mine at 120 for my field of view because I like seeing my surroundings a little bit better, but it's your own personal preference on where you're going to put this. Now, if you do intend to put it wherever the hell you're going to put it, let's say 60 or wherever you're going to put it, I highly recommend changing it from independent to affected. Because every time, let's say yours is 120, every time you aim down sight ADS and it's on this, it's going to go back to its default settings while aiming down sight. And then when you don't aim down sight, it's going to go back to its highest where it can. Right? So I do highly recommend putting on an affected. Collapse this. Put this on least. Put this on low. Your texture resolution can be on normal. You do not need this to be on high. You don't need this to be on high. For people out there that's also playing modern warfare, like Search and Destroy, Team Deathmatch, whatever the case might be, I highly recommend just put it on normal. Trust me, your FPS will be much better and your gameplay will be much, much better. Texture filter anastropic. Now, I highly recommend you just keep this on normal. You do not need this to be at high. You can keep it at normal. Particle quality, you can keep that at high, depending on the machine that you're running, if your machine can run this perfectly fine. Then you can put this on high. Otherwise, I recommend putting this at low. All right. This one over here, you can enable or disable. It's your own personal preference. But I do highly recommend enabling it because, I mean, then you can actually see stuff like this. You know, your sprays, bullet impacts and sprays and all those nice things, whatever the case might be. I highly recommend just enabling it. This one over here, you're going to keep on all. You do want this to be on all right now for Season 4 because it actually makes the game look a little bit better when you're playing the game. Go effects is your own personal preference. I highly recommend you do whatever you want to here. I keep mine enabled because I like seeing people's arms and you know, legs and shit fly off or whatever the case might be. It's pretty cool, right? On demand text is streaming. Disable this. It's 100%, 100% recommended to disable this. Restart shader installation. I will get to that just now. I'll tell you why this is here. This over here, the reason why I put mine on 1.00 is because I use ultra performance on a video DLSS. Now, if people don't have NVIDIA DLSS that's watching this video right now, all you need to do is put this on disable, put this all the way down, and put anti-analyzing either on one times, T2 times, or then this where it's Filmic SMAA T2 times, right? This is the highest it can go to, and the game will look really good. Trust me, the game will also look good like this, and also like this, depending on the machine that you're running. So if you're running a low-end machine, go ahead and put it on this. Mid-tier should be on this, and high-tier should be on this. Or mid-tier, high-tier should still also be on this one over here. Now, for people out there that's using the video DLSS like me, all you need to do is put this off, and put this on ultra performance, and put this all the way up like this, and say apply. You will get the best FPS out of this game right now at this very moment now for people that's playing warzone and then let's say you are sniping or whatever the case might be you're going to aim down your sight and then sometimes stuff's going to be blurry from very very far away it's because you have this on ultra performance the reason for that is if you change this to performance balanced or quality I'm just going to put it on quality when you have this on quality and you aim down your scope from a very far distance now as you can see my FPS is a little bit lower because what it's going to do is when you aim down your sight from a very far distance and you look very far out through your scope the quality is going to look fine it's not going to be a little bit blurry and then render in but if you have this like this ultra performance you will do more FPS but when you aim down your sight at a long distance, it's going to be blurry for a few seconds, and then it's going to come in and render in immediately afterwards. That's just how it is on Call of Duty 
Warzone right now, but I highly recommend putting this on Ultra Performance to get the best FPS. If you want your game to look all fancy smancy and all nice, and you don't care about FPS, you want your game to look nice, then go ahead and put this on quality. You should be good to go. You can also put this on balanced. It will also bring up a little bit of performance, and you can see a little bit better. As you can see, I'm doing 45 now. Or you can put it on performance just like this. It doesn't need to be Ultra Performance. It could be performance as well. As you can see, I'm doing about almost 160 FPS. So performance is also okay, but for me right now, I play mine ultra performance. It's your own personal preference. Play around with with this. If you use NVIDIA DLSS, play around with these settings over here and find the best one for you, for your game, for your experience. Okay? So I'm going to keep mine on ultra performance and leave it over there. This one, you're going to keep off if you use NVIDIA DLSS. Obviously, you can't change this if you have NVIDIA DLSS on. Depth of field, you're going to turn this off. World motion blur off weapon motion blur off it's a multiplayer game you do not need these things this one over here you're going to put it low you do not need it cash spot shadows and then cash sun shadows this plays a very big role on different types of machines if you're running an rtx graphics card or the latest amd graphics cards a lot of people are saying you should enable this if you do and you run your game perfectly fine go ahead and do so and leave them on if you get less fps go ahead and turn this off it's very easy to do, right? Own personal preference, depending on the machine that you're running. This one over here, you could just keep on normal. DirectX Ray Tracing, you're going to disable this. You do not need this. You don't. It's a multiplayer game, so you don't need this. If you want to lose FPS, then go ahead and select this and put this on, right? Disable this, I highly recommend it. Unless you're playing single player or co-op or whatever the case might be for Modern Warfare, then it's fine to put DirectX Ray Tracing on to make the game look much, much better, right? Ambient Occlusion, I highly recommend either keeping this on Disable, or you can put this on both. A lot of people are playing this game right now on both, and they're actually happy with that settings. It's your own personal preference. I keep mine at Disable, so I can do more FPS and make my game run much, much better. Screen Space Reflections, you're going to put this on Disable, and then you're going to apply all these settings. Then from there, you're going to say Restart Shader Installation. What it's going to do is it's going to apply the settings you just change now for your game and then it's going to restart the shader installation then i highly recommend when it's done restarting the shader installation restart your game and come back into the game and then go and play it ladies and gentlemen if this worked for you leave a like leave a comment subscribe to the youtube channel if you're new year and as always peace out